welcome back to the channel today i'm going to be talking about our trip to bimini and also to marathon florida and talking about kind of how i plan this trip so i started out planning probably about seven months out and our first part was trying to go to bimini and when trying to go to bimini in a smaller boat like re reality started to kind of hit in on me is that weather is so dependent on this trip and one of the big things is what I found out, and maybe some people have some connections over there, but once you book your trip in Bimini, nothing is reimbursable. So when I first started out planning this, I was trying to do almost like a five day to a 10 day trip in Bimini. And as I looked at it and reality kind of kicked in, I was like, or kicked in, I was kind of like, man, there's a good chance that I might lose all my booking fees and everything if I book this trip now. So how I plan this trip is so having a smaller boat and this trip being so dependent on the weather, I said I needed to have a backup plan. And so my backup plan was going to Marathon, Florida. And so what I did was I said, okay, at Marathon, Florida, when you book a room there, you always have to stay for seven days. So we went ahead and booked that from Saturday to Saturday. And I was talking to Shane, and I was like, man, I really want to do this Bimini trip. It's something I've always wanted to do, but always kind of a little scared to do it just because of the weather and just so much stuff can happen when you're so far away from land. And even when you're in Bimini, if something does happen and you don't have the tool to fix it, you're most likely not going to get it. You're going to have to have to get somebody to take it from Miami um, back over to Bimini or Fort Lauderdale to Bimini just because of the limited amount of resources that I know personally. Now there might be boat shops there. I just didn't know them when I was there. And I told Shane, I said, all right, how are we gonna do this? And so the way I, way I decided to do it, I said, all right, we're going to book Bimini on the very last second. And that would just kind of protect us um, financially. And when you're looking at the rooms and you're picking your dates to go out, you'll see that all the rooms across Bimini are all like they're all open you know and what I noticed right when I was about to book mine is about a week out and that five-day forecast came out and it was showing like two to threes on the day that I was gonna cross and I was just like there's no way like we could cross in three foot seas but I did not want to get beat up that for 56 miles going at um, going that far I was like no I'm not going and you'll start seeing the rooms though starting to book up though because the bigger boats are like oh i can go in two to three foot seas you know the wind was calling for like around like 13 knots and i wanted to cross um at 10 knots or below or 12 knots and below like that 10 to 12 knots was like my key range of saying yeah we can go and so i didn't book i was, I was kind of hesitant i didn't want to book and i was like no i'm not going to book it well the room started filling up and as that forecast window got smaller and more accurate the more rooms got booked up and so what we end up doing is we end up going down on tuesday so we left on tuesday and i said shannon we're going to go down on tuesday we're going to drive all the way to gainesville florida and we stay on we stayed in the holiday inn express on i-75 and that hotel is a really good hotel just if you're traveling a far away like i am over 10 hours there's plenty of boat parking spaces there and there's a all garden real close by that you can walk to and so i said well what happens we'll go down tuesday drive uh drive six hours and stay the night so we left tuesday night stay the night and then wake up we'll go to a spring and then drive down to fort lauderdale and then at that time we'll make the decision if we're crossing or not and if we don't cross we'll just go down to marathon a couple of days early and uh, find a hotel and then go stay in our condo for the seven days so it was tuesday night we're going down there i booked the room and i booked a room through a airbnb and the host ended up being unresponsive i was like oh my god like guys like the weather is starting to look good and the host was being un unresponsive and i was i called airbnb and i said hey look i already put a, uh, my credit card in i said well i'll be charged for this if he's unresponsive they said no and so right then I went ahead and canceled it and I found another room through VRBO. The Hilton did have rooms and it seems like they always have rooms, but they did not have any boat slips there. And so we ended up staying at Bimini Sands. And so that next morning on Tuesday, we ended up waking up and we drove down to Kelly Rock Springs and at Kelly Rock Springs, they ended up being closed. Um, 
just because they were at max capacity. So if you're going to Kelly Rock Springs, one of the lessons learned is they open up at nine o'clock, I believe it is. You need to be there at nine o'clock or you will not get in. It's only $3 for your whole car to get in uh, for all the passengers in your vehicle or truck. And it is so beautiful looking on pictures and in videos, but I really wanted to go there, didn't get to do there. So we drove to Kelly Rock Springs and then we went and stayed at Marriott and Diana and it was a courtyard Marriott and Diana and it's right next to the Bass Pro Shop. I'll put the addresses to all these hotels that we stayed at and it's we're also about five minutes away from Harbor Town Marina and that is the marina that we launched at. And so we woke up that morning, packed up the boat, got to Harbor Town Marina and this is another thing, you need to get to the boat launch super early because it gets packed up. Um, the time we got there, I think it was at 6 a.m. and when you pull in, I, I can kind of show you the map, there's a different way to kind of pull in. You don't want to go through all the neighborhoods, there's a main road and go through. But at 7 o'clock, Harbor Town Marina was completely packed with boats where they weren't taking any more people, they were turning people around. So that's another big thing is if you're going to uh, launch at Harbor Town Marina and Diana, make sure you get there early or you're not get a spot. So it's $20 a day to um, launch your boat and park your trailer there and when you pull in you'll see one boat launch right off the back I would go past that boat launch they have three more past it that very first one is super steep and it's not a very good boat launch so go past that boat launch and then hit either the second third or fourth one up now parking in Harbor Town Marina is also a little sketchy because they don't have official boat parking spots so what they have is like normal car and truck parking spots and then they have the bumpers that separate the lane next over to it and the way they tell you to park is you drive over those bumpers and you're literally squeezing in between two other vehicles um, when i was there i mean it was maybe inches on either side that i had to park my trailer and i was really scared because the truck next to me had a huge trailer and there's no way they could have pulled out without hitting my truck. And I was talking to the guys at Harbor Town. I was like, hey, like, how's he gonna pull out if I'm parked here? And they assured me that he wouldn't mess up my truck. So they'll de-hook de his trailer, back his trailer up. And if they did, they wouldn't hit my trailer and then they'll re-hook it up to, uh, to his truck. So they are very helpful at Harbor Town, but parking is, is a little sketchy. There might be some other boat launches that are better to launch at I just wasn't aware of them and um, that's where we end up launching and so getting into Bimini so what we did is um, so there's a couple websites that you can find all the information you need to need to get into Bimini and the first one is going to bahamascustoms.com or .gov and what they'll do is they'll tell you all the forms that you have to fill out and instead of me kind of like showing you which forms that I filled out it's all changed after the week that we were there. So when the week that we were there, we had to do a health visa, we had to get a COVID shot, and um, the videos that I watched uh, trying to prepare for this trip, they said everything was filled out by paper. Well now, Bahamas is going um, all online now, and so you can do the click to clear now, and um, I'll leave the link on that, but it's uh, www.besw.gov, and you can fill out the whole cruising permit, and everything right there online. I paid in person. You can pay online, but you do not get a refund if you pay in online. They just give you a year credit. Say if you get canceled and you can't go that week, they'll give you a credit for a year. And so next year when you come at that same time or within that year, um, they'll have it on file. One of the big things that I knew that I did and what a lot of other people did was make sure after you fill out everything, is print all the documents that you need to bring. Um, so I have a whole bunch of paper here just talking about vaccinated travelers and all that. But all that stuff, all the updated information is on the website. And since everything kind of changed since I was there, um, that's kind of what I recommend you to go to is go to those websites and check that out. So you got all your paperwork filled out and you launched at Harbor Town Marina. And one thing that I found out there is that that whole canal all the way to the inlet is no way. Uh, so when I came out of the little, the small river out to the big river by the port, 
Um, I didn't see any no weight signs right off the bat, but there is a whole bunch of no weight signs and they're right on the grass line. I think that's to help protect the marine life manatees and stuff like that that go up and down that river. So that river um, right there, it is all no weight. And so what we did is we went all the way to the inlet and at the inlet, it is 56 miles to Bimini. So one of the big questions that I, always, I was getting on the bay boat was, well, what was my burn rate and how many gallons per, or how many miles per gallon I was getting? When you're planning this trip, assume that you're gonna get the worst gas mileage that your boat can get. And so like if you're out in the Gulf and you're getting like two and a half to three miles per gallon, uh, assume like 1.9 to two miles per gallon, cause you're gonna be loaded down more than a typical trip because you're gonna have all of your tools. Like I had all my tools that if I spawn a prop, um, I had extra props on there. I had everything that I could think of that could go down, extra fuses, I had an eeper. Um, I had all of our food, had ice, I had three cases of water. That was actually end up being too much water for us. We didn't end up using that much water. We probably could have gotten back by with like two cases or one case of water, but I wasn't really sure how much water we'd be drinking out in the sun. We had beer, we had Gatorade, we had Coke, we had um, the food for the week. So you're just extremely loaded down in your boat. And I was averaging about 1.8, 1.9 miles per gallon going, also you're going against the Gulf current or the Gulf stream. And so that's gonna affect your gas mileage too. And once you get over there, it's gonna take you about an hour and a half to get over to Bimini on a calm day. Um, if it's rough, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna slow you down. It's gonna take a lot longer. So when you're coming into Bimini, there's usually if you're going down there there's going to be probably a line of boats going so when we were crossing you would see boats coming and going um, just along with us there was a big flotilla like a 10 boat flotilla and you could see how they all lined up they all lined up almost headed strike um, directly to Bimini Sands and the reason why is there's a big sandbar that comes off of right by Radio Beach and there's a channel marker and you have to come in towards Bimini Sands and then veer left into the channel and you can't miss the sandbar guys i mean it pops so good in the ice blue water you won't miss it and you'll see that there is channel markers out there and you go there so once you go into that uh pull into those channel you run you're still running it's not no idle all the way until you get in um, the little inlet there and then it goes down to no idle or goes down to idle not no idle can't talk today and you're gonna pull in and you're gonna probably go about a quarter of a mile and you're gonna pull into Bimini Big Game. And when you pull into Bimini Big Game, there is a $25 uh, docking fee there. Um, also the dock master, he had the immigration form. So I copied over my information on the immigration form. And then you walk out and he's gonna tell you, he's very helpful, very nice guy. He's gonna tell you, hey, you wanna go to immigration first and then customs. So customs is located, you'll actually pass customs when you're walking to immigration. And so when you get out of your boat and you walk down the dock, you're probably gonna walk, depending on where you dock at, you'll either walk right or left, but you're gonna go between these two bu buildings and you're gonna see some marlins on the left-hand side. And just past that is where customs is. And you walk out, you're gonna wanna walk out be um, between these two little brick walls and you're gonna take a right. And immigration is about, I don't know, um, an eighth of a mile down on the left-hand side, a little pink building. You walk in there, there was some guy standing out there and uh, he's asked him where immigration was. He said, walk in. And so inside that pink building, there's a breezeway. So you walk in between that breezeway and it's the uh, door, last door on your left, I believe it is. And there's a hallway there and there's gonna be a line of people there. And so that's the longest part right there is going into immigration if you have all of your paperwork printed out just as a backup you have um, your immigration number the click to clear number and that for customs and all that it only takes you passports the immigration card once you're actually in immigration it only takes about 10 minutes to 15 minutes not even that long it probably takes you about five to ten minutes to get in to get out but be prepared to wait and the reason why is because people in front of you are not gonna have all their documents and they're gonna be helping them out and making sure they get everything in for them to uh, clear immigration. Once you clear immigration, you're gonna walk over to customs and then customs is gonna ask you for the click to clear um, number that you get in, once you do click to clear. 
if you print out the paperwork, you know, I think it has a QR code that they can scan to because they asked me if I had the QR code and I didn't have that one on me. I didn't have that sheet on me. And so I just gave them the RO number and they were able to pull it up. And after that, guys, I mean, it's, it's clear sailing after that. You walk back, you're good. You fly your, um, your courtesy Bimini flag. And when you're actually you are pulling up, it seems like the flag flying um, the quarantine flag, the yellow flag, and even the courtesy Bimini flag seemed like they were very relaxed about flying the flags. We flew it all the time, but there were boats coming in without the yellow flags. There were boats, you know, cruising without the courtesy flag. So it's kind of, I guess it's kind of up to you if you want to fly the flags. I didn't mind flying them, so I did fly them. I didn't put up the uh, quarantine flag until actually I got into um the inlet there after passing the sandbar at bimini and i'm just telling you guys the bohemians are very very nice people very easy to work with and are talked to very polite people um, i'm just so happy how nice they were and how helpful they were and if you ever get lost you just ask them they'll help you out and they'll tell you where to go and after that so we couldn't check into our hotel until four and so our plan was i had it all scheduled out i knew we're going to leave um, the hotel at 5, 5.30. We're going to get to the boat launch by 5.45. We're going to launch, and we hit up a um, marina right before just to top off on ice and fuel. And then we went out and drove all the way to uh, Bambi Bahamas. So we got there out of customs and everything. We're probably out about around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then the first place we went to was the Suspona, Suspona concrete ship. Hit the um, dove that, and then after that we went to Turtle Rocks, and then we went into um, Bimini Sands and checked in right at four. So one thing is at Bimini Sands is that all the rooms are different, and there's good rooms to stay in, and there's bad rooms to stay in. So the room that we stayed in, uh, eventually after the third room, the first room we stayed in, the whole bottom floor was flooded. The second room we stayed in um, had no water in it, and then the third room that we ended up staying in for the trip um, end up being a smoking room and it had no hot water and you would think like no hot water uh, Like in the middle of summer like in Alabama no hot water. It's still hot when it comes out of the shower head This was like spring-fed water uh, We did have like some sewage come in up through the sink and we also had some sewage come into the dishwasher I would not recommend drinking their water at all the water that we were getting kind of smelled funny um, so it is good to make sure you bring enough water for cooking and drinking. Um, but guys, I'm telling you, this trip is an absolute blast. And if you're in a smaller boat, I think it's very wise to have that backup plan. We took, end up taking off, um, basically took two weeks is what I ended up taking off. And we did the whole Bahamas trip, which y'all seen the videos on that. And then we went back. So we stayed there Thursday and got there Thursday, stayed there Thursday night and Friday night, and then uh, went back on Saturday. There's so much stuff to do. Uh, you could stay there easily for five days, and but staying there just for two nights like we did, it still was a great vacation in Bahamas. Just the water is so beautiful. It's gonna make you wanna go again. One thing I forgot to talk about is how you get back in the United States and uh, clear customs and it is super easy. The only thing that you have to do is, before you go to Bimini, is download the CBP roadmap. And his, this is a picture of kind of what it looks like. You do have to create an account and put in your information. But once you get back in, um, going into the United States, you just open up the app, log in, click in the check-in. It's gonna ask you who is the master of the boat, what's the boat registration, and several other questions and uh, super easy click it hit submit and after that we just went ahead and um, headed into the united states and i think it was like headed back into uh, fort lauderdale i think it took about i don't know 20 minutes um 20 minutes for us to say that we were clear to get in but well, after we hit submit we just went we just kept driving the boat and headed into fort lauderdale i hope you guys enjoyed this hopefully um gives you a little bit of insight of how to do the trip and how to plan for it we end up did bringing extra gas for the trip because when we were there, Bimini was out of fuel. The fuel barge had been really delayed, but they end up getting fuel on Thursday, but then it got swarmed by boats. And so everybody was filling up, but we didn't end up having to fill up. We had a 90 gallon tank 
and then I brought an extra I think it was 20 gallons that I brought extra and even if I didn't use those 20 gallons I would have had 20 gallons left in my 90 gallon tank uh, so the Rabalo could do it but we did not roam around a lot in Bimini. I, it was very strategic where we went just because I was worried about not having gas. Bimini Sands did not have gas even after the fuel barge came through. They were hoping that their barge would come in um, later on in the week. Um, but the marina right by Bimini Big Game did have fuel on Thursday. But I hope this helps, guys. I um, really enjoyed it. Keep leaving comments back. I, I guarantee you I missed something. Uh, if y'all want to know something else, if I pat, leave a comment in there. I have no problem responding and helping you guys out. And if you guys do plan on going to Bimini or Marathon, I really hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy this episode. I'll see you on the water.